Okay, so we have our uh, piano disc power supply removed from the piano now. And the model number on this power supply is 8000-00009. So uh, it's not powering on. We'll uh, take it apart and see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, so we just need to remove uh, some screws first, get access to the inside. There's some on uh, this side, there's some on the other side as well. There's some flat ones here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven there. And a couple on the side we'll remove. That looks like it's it. So we'll remove those screws. All right, all the screws have been removed. So I'm hoping that I should be able to just pop this panel right off. It should slide right out. There we go. Just gotta be careful there's a fan wire that's connected there. So I just wanna make sure I don't go too hard. Gently put it, pull it over so we don't rip this fan wire here. Okay, so that should get us access to the inside. Now we're ready to do a visual inspection of the board. All right, so to uh, remove this board, we're gonna have to remove a few screws. There's one. On that corner there, two, three in that corner there, uh, four there, five, six, and seven. So I see seven screws here that we're going to remove from the board. And we'll also have to disconnect these clips here. There's, uh, it looks like there's a few on this one. On the, that's the power supply and then a few on the switch that we'll have to disconnect as well and then of course the uh, the fan there as well so the first thing we're going to do is start uh, removing the uh, screws on the board and then we'll disconnect these clips all right so <clears throat> now that we've got the screws removed I'm just going to uh, we're pull these clips off so the brown one on the right side here and the blue one over here and then underneath same thing there's a brown one here and a blue one over on this side. We're gonna pop that off, just wiggle these out. Um, and then we'll do the same thing with this connector as well. All right, so these clips have now been removed. I'm gonna remove this set next. So the uh, green yellow one is at the top here. We'll remove that first. All right, so now we have the brown one on this side and then the blue one on this side we're gonna remove next. Okay, so we're almost ready to remove the board. Uh, there's two more screws that I missed here that we're going to actually have to uh, remove. There's a little pin out that goes to the piano there. So we'll have to remove those two screws and then we should be able to slide the board up. Okay, so now we can disconnect the fan. And we are ready to remove the board. So we're just going to slide it straight out. And place it over to the side here. So we have our power supply board out now, and we've done a visual inspection of all the electrolytic caps. Uh, those, that's these guys right here. And we haven't seen any um, damaged caps that are bulging, discolored, or leaking electrolyte uh, with our visual inspection. So the next thing we want to do is actually test them with an ESR meter. Normally, you'd have to actually remove each cap to do a test. Um, what we're looking for is uh, the caps at a very low resistance, equivalent, equivalent series resistance, ESR. Um, and normally you'd have to do that out of circuit, so by removing the, the cap. And the reason being is uh, sometimes when you have a capacitor that's in series or parallel with other uh, resistors or other capacitors, we'll get a false measurement. But what we're going to do is test them in circuit. And if we get a high resistance, then we'll focus on those capacitors. We'll remove those ones that have a high resistance and we'll do a test of them out of circuit. All right, so working with uh, capacitors can be very dangerous. These capacitors can store a lot of charge even when they're powered off. So what I use is a 10 ohm resistor and I just go and bridge all of the caps on the board and just make sure that all of the charge is removed from the capacitors before we do any work on them. All right, so the two caps I'm going to test first are these two large ones. These are 820 microfarad caps. So we'll test those first with an ESR meter. All right, so we have the negative terminal connected to the negative side of the capacitor. And 
positive side to the positive side. And we're getting a reading of 0.1 ohms, which is okay for a capacitor that's less than a thousand microfarads. So that one looks okay. All right, so our next 820 microfarad capacitor is getting a reading of 1.87 ohms, and that is on the high side. So uh, that's good if the capacitance was less than 47 microfarads. Fortunately, this is 820 microfarad capacitor. So that's on the high side. So we're gonna have to remove that one and do a test with this capacitor out of circuit. So to remove the caps, what we're gonna do is use a little bit of flux on both ends here. We're just using our solder wick to suck up as much solder as we can to make it easier to move. And then we wanna make sure that these pins are just a little bit wobbly. So we're gonna grab as much as we can and it should make it a whole lot easier to remove when we get rid of the solder here. And once the capacitor is removed, we're gonna do the test again to make sure that we get the same reading out of circuit, make sure that there's nothing else interfering. And sure enough, this does look like it's um, over the resistance that we'd expect for an 820 microfarad capacitor. So uh, we're gonna do a replacement of this one. All right, so the other thing I'm gonna do is do a capacitance test. And we are reading 200 microfarads for this 820 microfarad capacitor. So normally I'd expect something within a 10% tolerance. So in around the 800 mark would be probably okay, but not 200. So it looks like indeed this capacitor is toast. So we'll have to replace that one. I'm going to continue testing all the other electrical capacitors on the board. This one is actually testing okay. We got a 0.084 ohms, which is a very low ESR. So I'm expecting this one to be good. We'll continue testing the other ones. Again, this one's looking good. 0 0.054 ohms on this one. 0 0.064 ohms on this one, looking good. And this last electrolytic cap on the top here is looking good, 0 0.06 ohms. Right now I'm testing this 220 microfarad cap here. And I'm getting a reading of 16 ohms, which is very high for 220 microfarads. So I'm gonna remove that one and take a look at it. So once again, use your solder wick. And grab as much of that solder as we can. Until that pin starts to move freely. There we go, one side. go so we have this cap out of circuit and we are getting a open circuit so we're definitely not getting a, a reading on this one this one's definitely a bad cap so i'm just going to test the capacitance of this capacitor as well my multimeter and we are again getting an open circuit so this is definitely a bad cap that we'll have to replace Right, so we have a new 20, 220 microfarad uh, capacitor. Just want to make sure that we insert that so that the negative side is pointing towards me. You can see that with the white mark there, that is the indicator for the negative side. We'll add a bit of flux around those two contacts there. And we can add some solder. hands down and finally we'll clean up the flux residue with some rubbing alcohol and a q-tip now we're testing this capacitor here and it looks okay 0 0.08 ohms next we're looking at this 20, 220 microfarad capacitor right in there and we are getting a reading of 
1.13 ohms. So that's borderline. Uh, I think I'm just gonna remove that capacitor using the same process and just do a test at a circuit. Okay, so we're testing that 220 microfarad capacitor. We're getting a reading of half an ohm, which is good if it was less than 200 microfarads, which it's not. So just to be safe, I think we're gonna go ahead and replace this one. So just to be safe, even though the ESR uh, tested fine on that second 820 microfarad capacitor, I'm just gonna do a quick capacitance test on it. And I'm getting 670 ohms, so I think I'm gonna be safe and replace both these capacitors because that does not within the 10% tolerance. All right, so I repeated that same process for all of the electrolytic caps on this board, and I found six bad capacitors in the end. This one here, this 820 microfarad capacitor, C7, as you can see down there. This one here as well I replaced, C12. And then we had two 220 microfarad capacitors. This one right here, which is C11. And then on the other side over here, we had C26, that one there, so C26. And then we had 2000 microfarad capacitors right over here, which are C33, hard to see, and C35. So those two also had to be replaced. And I think we're ready to put this board back in place. All right, so we have our board back in its case and we've secured it down with the mounting screws. Uh, just a reminder where these cables go. Um, so on the input, the power input side, we have a ground wire on top and we have a blue and a brown wire on the left and the right here. And then it, that blue and brown wire goes over to the switch right here on the bottom. We have a blue and brown wire that go on the bottom. And then on the top of the switch, we have a blue and brown wire that runs to this cable here. So that's how we have to put it back together. And just remember to put the fan connection back in place and we're ready to replace the cover and secure it in place. So with the cover in place, we're just gonna replace all of our screws. So all the flat headed screws go on the side that is used to be uh, secured to the piano there. And we have two tiny little screws that go to the uh, piano connector. All right, so we have our cover back on. We're ready to plug it back in and give it a test. And if we turn it on, I'm hoping to see a green light. And it looks like we got a green light. All right, so we're getting a green light, but the next thing I wanna do is check the output voltage. It says we should be getting 40 volts out DC. So I'm gonna have my multimeter set to DC voltage and we'll measure across ground and positive and we're getting 40 volts DC. So that is looking good. I feel pretty good that we have a working power supply again. I think we're ready to try it in the piano. So the first thing we're going to do is plug our cords in to the power supply before we slide it onto the two mounting screws at the very top there. Once it's hung in place, we're just going to secure the bottom screw. All right, so we have our power supply secured and turned on. And we can see that the red light came on. So we're just going to run a test. All right, looks like we're working again. So that's how to fix a piano disc power supply that's no longer turning on. I hope this video helps somebody else.